In this video, I will tell you about the basics of antennas and beam forming. So the first thing to know about an antenna is that it contains a radiating element, just as a light bulb, that is radiating electromagnetic waves in a particular direction. So in this case, it will radiate in this direction, and that's the same thing with the typical radiating element in an antenna. If you would like the radiation to be more directive, pointing in a particular direction towards you, then you can put multiple radiating elements next to each other and feed them with the same signal. We still call this one antenna, but the signal will become more directive. And with two radiating elements, you get twice of the energy going forward and less energy going in other directions. We're using the same amount of energy still. And these two times we call it three decibels. And similarly, if you have four radiating elements, and you feed it with the same signal, you still have one antenna, but you get four times the amount of energy going forward. We call it six decibel of array gain. The problem with making a more directive signal is that you only benefit right in front of it. So if you know where the user is going to be, you can make sure that you get this much stronger signal that we call an array gain towards its user. But if the user is at different locations, just as you will move around the uh, light emitted from a flashlight in order to see a large area, you need to do the same thing with this beam that you're forming in order to reach another user, like the red user in this case here. And then you can use the same number for radiant elements, for example, but you need to feed them with different signals uh, in order to create uh, constructive interference in the direction of interest. So you can send a beam in a particular direction, another beam in another direction, and hopefully you send it in the direction where the user is. And in order to do that, you can send the same signal, but with different phases. And that will then create a, a constructive interference in a particular direction. And in addition to that, you can also adapt the amplitudes to create other types of beams. We call these different radiant elements an antenna. So the number of antennas is equal to the number of inputs that you're having. And if you have two antennas, as you can see here, you can see that you can form a strong beam in a particular direction, but you will get some leakage in other directions as well, which we call side lobes. So we have the main lobe pointing in direction of interest and side lobes in other directions. And if you are then having four radiant elements you, and you create one antenna of each one of them, you get a more directive signal in a particular direction with less side lobes in other directions. And you can do something in between, meaning that you take four radiant elements, you map them two and two to become uh, two different antennas, and you feed each one of them with the same signal uh, in, in one pair, but you are adjusting the phases between the first two and the second two. In that way, you can steer beams in different directions, but uh, you will not have the same flexibility as before. In particular, you can get a narrow beam pointing in a particular direction, but you will also get additional side lobes that could be quite large pointing in other directions. Still, this is something that is used in real systems, and particularly when you are putting up a base station array on the rooftop, then you can put together radiant elements that are adjacent to each other and feed them with the same signal uh, and still use uh, to send a beam downward. Because even if you get a signal going upwards as well, you don't really care about that because your users won't be there, so it won't create any unnecessary interference. Another important thing with having multiple antennas is that you can do what is called spatial division multiple access or spatial multiplexing. That's two names for the same thing. And that means that you send multiple beams at the same time. Uh, could be to the same user, but in particular it's of interest to send it to different users that want to access your system at the same time. So you can send a blue signal in this direction, a red signal in this direction, uh, and then different users in different directions can receive these ones. And since the amount of energy that you can radiate from your radiant elements is limited, you need to share them between them. So instead of sending one strong beam here, you send one half of the beam here, half of the beam here, for example. And the more radiant elements, the more directive the signals are, and therefore you can then uh, send these signals to the users with less and less interference between them. And you can multiplex as many signals as you have antennas. So with four uh, antennas, you can choose between sending one strong beam, two weaker beams, or four even weaker beams. However, these four beams will still be as strong as if you only had one radiant element to start with that only sent one signal. When you have many radiant elements, people can start to say, well, it will be too expensive to feed each one of them with uh, an independent signal that you generate. 
and why don't we send the same signal to each of them and just phase shift it uh, at the rate and element. This is called a phased array and is an old concept and you can use it very nicely to steer beams in different angular directions but you need to assign the same amplitude to each of the rated elements and you can only send one beam at a time. There is a hybrid beam forming approach where you try to do the same thing with multiple beams where you have fewer beams than rated elements. Here you can see an example of the problem with using these type of things as like phase arrays because this is a user where there is no particular path that leads the best to this user. There are two different strong directions that you can send the beams in to bounce different objects and get the signal to reach the user. And if you use the phased array, you need to select only one of them. And if you have all the flexibility of beam forming by having four antennas in this case, one input to each of the rating elements, you can send a beam that points into both of these directions. And you will in that way be able to get twice the energy being reached at this user because you're using multiple paths. Still, people might be arguing, well, yeah, we need to sacrifice this capability in order to bring down the price. But this is actually a bit of a misunderstanding because there are already uh, commercial solutions to do this kind of thing. So here you see a figure of a 64 antenna base station that have already been deployed in the US and it contains 128 rated elements, which means that each antenna is made up of two different rated elements. And to understand what actually is going on here, we need to talk about polarization. So electromagnetic waves can have different polarizations like that or like this. And each antenna is only sensitive to one type of uh, polarization. So there is a risk that you can get signals of a polarization that you cannot detect on the antenna unless you have two orthogonal types of polarizations. So for that reason, a base station array contains 64 rated elements of one polarization and 64 other rated elements with the other polarization and then the user device can be rotated in any way you like. And we call this big arrays with 64 antennas Massive MIMO. So if you would like to learn more about Massive MIMO you can read my book Massive MIMO Networks. You can download a free PDF of it at MassiveMIMObook.com. In particular section 7 provides the theoretical details of antennas, beam properties, array design, polarization and other things that I've covered in this video.